Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle with an illustration of historical simulation and this tricky issue of how we pick the value at risk when the distribution is discrete and not continuous. And so to illustrate, I've assumed a sample of 100, so n equals 100. That means we observe 100 loss observations in our trailing window. And then I have very conveniently made it so that our worst loss is negative 100, then our next worst loss is negative 99, and so on, up to our best loss or least worst loss of negative 1. So 100 loss observations that I've ordered. Once we have ordered loss observations, you may recall the advantage of historical simulation over the other two approaches to value at risk is its simplicity. That is to say, once we've ordered the loss observations, we really just look down the list. Now let's ask the question, what is the value at risk with 95% confidence? You may recall VAR is always one-tailed, so the 95% necessarily corresponds to a 5%, that's 1 minus 95%, significance. So now to answer the question, I've got two columns here. The first column just re-represents re the same ordered loss observations as they are losses being negative, so the best down to the worst. And then the second column, how we oftentimes represent them in risk, but is sometimes confusing to a new learner, is we take the absolute value. So here's our negative one in terms of a mathematical loss that we convert into a one and say, this is a loss of one, this is a loss of two, a loss of 93, and there's our worst loss at 100. So here they are in absolute value terms. And now, what is the 95% confidence value at risk? Well, my suggestion, my belief, is that there are three different valid answers. I am not aware of a prevailing methodology that rules, but I think it's just important to be aware that we can get slightly different answers. I'll tell you my preference right away is to follow Kevin Dowd. But first, Philip Jurian would, you, would pick out the fifth worst loss. So if we come down here is the 100, that's the first worst loss, second worst, third worst, fourth worst, fifth worst loss is a loss of 96. And then under 95% confidence, then Jorian would say 96 is the VAR. And I suppose we could state that in English with the following. The 95% confidence VAR is $96, meaning 5% of the time we expect to lose 96 or worse. Okay, so that's not my favorite. Another alternative is to follow the percentile function in Excel. I'm using Excel 2010, which has a fabulous new feature here. The, this is a more correct than what we used, they used to have, percentile.exc for exclusive. In the video, I'm going to attach a link to Excel is fun where there's an excellent video and I learned more about this. But so here's the function percentile exclusive and it only takes two parameters, the array of losses. And then notice the confidence level. I've just labeled that's the 95%. So if we take the percentile function exclusive, we would get 95.95. Notice, owing to the interpolation, we're getting a number that's not falling exactly on the integers. And then if I wanted to hand calculate that or just calculate the position of that, I would take the sample size plus one and multiply by my confidence of 95%. So this posi the position is 95.95. Happens to correspond to the VAR just because of my my clean mapping here of numerical integers. But that's just the position representation here of the percentile function. So that's the second method. I would suggest that is also a valid value at risk. Now the third and final approach is where I follow Kevin Dowd and is my preference and I'll show you why. But first of all, here's the formula from Kevin Dowd and I've got it here is it the actual Excel large function takes the array one minus the confidence. You'll recognize one minus the confidence again is the significance level. In this case, 5% significance multiplied by sample plus one. That's the formula right here. And 
against these absolute values, the large re returns for me a clean 95. How did it deliver an integer? Well, that's the design of the large. In this case, this function here returns a 6. And so large is giving me the sixth largest value, sixth largest observation. Here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth largest observation. So large is always going to return for me one of the observations as opposed to the percentile, which is likely to do some interpolation. So the 95 instead of the 96 is the value at risk that results from a 95% confidence VAR. Okay, so immediately that might seem strange relative to the 96, but here's why I like it. It's based on the idea that a 95% confident VAR is when 5% is in the tail. So if we look at this as the cutoff, really, then notice what we've got here are these five observations. One, two, three, four, five. Our fifth, our five worst losses are in the tail. That's five out of 100 or 5%. And so that's why that corresponds to our VAR confidence of 95%. And then we can, I think, more cleanly restate this then, this 95% confident VAR as our 95% uh, 5 of the time we expect the loss to exceed 95. So that's the third method and it's my preference. But in my opinion, all three would be technically valid as long as we are clear about what approach we're using. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.